This mini-movie is a drama, mystery romance about a newly married woman moving into an English estate with her husband but finds herself in the shadows of his ex-wife and the haunting mystery around her death. There will be spoilers, let's get started. Our movie takes place in 1935 and begins with the protagonist, a young lady, riding in a car traveling back to the Monte Carlo Hotel with packages she picked up for her social climber employer, Mrs. Van Hopper. The real name of the female protagonist was never mentioned in the entire film. At the hotel room, even before she could settle in, Mrs. Van Hopper, her employer, asked her to go down and asked the café maitre d' to arrange a seat for them beside where the dashing Mr. Maxim de Winter will be seated at lunch. Mr. Maxim de Winter, a widower, is the owner of one of the finest homes in Mandalay, England. At the café, while she spoke with the maitre d', the widower Mr. Maxim de Winter was behind her and heard the request. At lunch, Mrs. Van Hopper, her employer, introduced her to Mr. Maxim de Winter who has mistaken her for a relative of Mrs. Van Hopper. That night, Mrs. Van Hopper fell ill and was not able to have breakfast the following morning. She was then denied breakfast at the terrace. The widower, Mr. Maxim de Winter, who was having breakfast and overheard the conversation, asked her to sit with him. Mr. Maxim de Winter enjoyed their conversation long after breakfast. Later that morning, Mr. Maxim de Winter sent her a note through the concierge, inviting her for a drive. That was the beginning of their many trysts until they both fell in love. One evening, as she tried to quietly enter their hotel room, she saw Mrs. Van Hopper, her employer, all dressed up. Mrs. Van Hopper saw her damp hair, instructed her to dry her hair and go to the concierge to book them a train back for New York the following day. Apparently, Mrs. Van Hopper learned about her affair with Mr. Maxim de Winter and mocked her. Mr. Maxim de Winter didn't allow her to leave with her employer, Mrs. Van Hopper, so he proposed marriage. After the honeymoon, Mr. Maxim de Winter brought her home to Mandalay, England. The keeper of the house, Mrs. Danvers, resented it because she was loyal to Rebecca, the first Mrs. de Winters. Rebecca died in a boating mishap the year before. Mrs. Danvers cannot accept that there is a new Mrs. de Winters. She made life difficult for the new Mrs. de Winters. Mrs. Danvers poisons her thoughts about how Rebecca, the first wife, was so beautiful and loved by people that the annual Mandalay costume ball Rebecca holds every year became the most awaited event in Mandalay. This made Mrs. de Winters try to follow in Rebecca's footsteps and decides to revive the ball to the surprise of Maxim, her husband. One day, Mrs. de Winters discovered an abandoned boathouse near the cliff as she and Maxim went out for a walk. When Maxim left for a business trip to London, a visitor came, Jack Favell, a cousin of Rebecca. Jack said he came by for tea with Mrs. Danvers, the housekeeper. When Maxim, her husband, came home and learned about the unannounced visit of Jack Favell, he was so enraged. Mrs. de Winters explained she didn't know that Jack was prohibited from entering their property and that Mrs. Danvers, the housekeeper, invited him for tea, which Mrs. Danvers denied. That night Mrs. de Winters confronted Mrs. Danvers and asked her to leave. Mrs. Danvers spun stories of why she is devoted to Rebecca, the first wife. Mrs. Danvers said it was not just a job for her, but Rebecca was her life. Mrs. de Winters' heart melted. Mrs. Danvers said she was sorry for failing her but Mrs. de Winters seemed so set on doing things her way that she didn't ask for Mrs. Danvers' help. So, Mrs. de Winters took her back and asked Mrs. Danvers' help in everything, including all the arrangements for the Mandalay costume ball. 
Mrs. Danvers manipulated Mrs. de Winters to get a dress similar to the dress on the portrait of Mr. Maxim de Winter's grand-aunt. On the night of the ball, everyone was waiting for Mrs. de Winters to reveal her costume, including Mr. Maxim de Winters. But everyone was shocked when she came out wearing the red ball gown. Maxim, her husband, was so furious he asked her to change. Her lady maid, Charisse, admitted to the manipulation of Mrs. Danvers. Mrs. de Winters found out that the dress was the same gown Rebecca wore at the previous ball. Again, Mrs. de Winters confronted Mrs. Danvers, but Mrs. Danvers insulted her instead. Mrs. Danvers spoke about how she is not loved by Maxim, and that she can never replace Rebecca in Maxim's life. Mrs. de Winters gasps for breath by opening one of the windows, Mrs. Danvers followed her and tempted her to jump off, but Mrs. de Winters was startled by an explosion, and saw Maxim running out of the mansion shouting about a shipwreck. The trawler found Rebecca's sunken boat with her decomposing body. This opened an investigation into Rebecca's death. That night, Mrs. de Winters went to the abandoned boathouse and found Maxim, her husband. Maxim confessed what truly happened. Maxim told her about Rebecca's infidelities with different men knowing Maxim cannot divorce her because Maxim needs to protect his family's name. On the night of Rebecca's death, she told Maxim that she is carrying another man's child. Rebecca then placed a gun to her chest and told Maxim to pull the trigger so he could be free of her. Maxim did and disposed of her body in Rebecca's boat, scuttled and sank it. Maxim said he will not blame Mrs. de Winters if she will leave and told the police the story. Mrs. de Winters was happy with Maxim's confession confirming that he loved her and not Rebecca. When they got back home, Jack Favell, Rebecca's cousin and the alleged father of, Rebecca's child, was waiting and blackmailed Maxim with Rebecca's note stating Rebecca wanted to see Jack because she had something important to tell him. Jack asked for £10,000 from Maxim for his silence. At the trial, Mrs. Danvers betrayed Maxim and supported Jack Favell. Mrs. Danvers, the housekeeper, claimed that Rebecca went to London to see a doctor because she was pregnant. The check for £10,000 was shown by the lawyer as proof that Maxim bribed Jack Favell to keep quiet. Jack Favell created a scene in the court accusing Maxim of murdering Rebecca and their child. Maxim was arrested and put to jail. Mrs. de Winters immediately went to Mandalay, with the estate manager, Frank Crawley, to search for the name of the doctor which Rebecca consulted. Mrs. de Winters fired Mrs. Danvers that night and drove to London to see the doctor. While the doctor leads Mrs. de Winters to his office, the doorbell rings. As the doctor went down to see who the guest was, Mrs. de Winters slipped to his office and searched for Rebecca's file. The guest at the door was the lawyer asking for Rebecca's medical file. The file revealed that Rebecca was not pregnant but was diagnosed to have advanced cervical cancer and a few months to live. The doctor confirmed that Rebecca's remaining life would have been in intense pain, which could have triggered her to commit suicide. Maxim was released from prison, and on their return to Mandalay, they found the mansion in flames. Mrs. Danvers set the mansion on fire and jumped off the cliff to her death. The movie concludes with Mrs. de Winters coming out of a bad dream in a hotel room in Cairo with her husband, Maxim. That's the end of our mini-movie. Could you guess the name of the movie? The movie is Rebecca, released in 2020. Critics gave it a 39% tomato score, 38% by the audience and mini-movies rates it 5 out of 10 doggy treats. If you enjoyed this mini-movie, you can support the movie by watching Rebecca or following us on social media.